As we have talked in the video about how several African countries are building the Great Green Wall of Africa in the Sahel region to combat desertification and giving life back to dead soil, desertification is still described as the greatest environmental challenge of our time. Each year around an area of three times the size of Switzerland is lost to the shifting sands of the world's deserts. That means each year we are losing this size of arable land which means progressively fewer crops and less food. Desertification is such a colossal, understated and underestimated problem of the 21st century that it is threatening the food security and livelihoods of more than 2.5 billion people. Particularly in China, it's a huge problem. Around 28% of the China's territory is considered a desert. Currently, the Gobi Desert is the fastest moving desert on Earth. It swallows up to 3,370 square kilometers of land annually. But the Chinese have been working to combat desertification over the years, and it has been widely successful. For example, China was home to a forest area of just over 80 million hectares in 1949, with a forest coverage rate of only 8.6%. In stark contrast, however, its forest cover rate reached 23% by the end of 2020, with a forest area of 220 million hectares, of which 80 million hectares were artificially planted. So in 7 years, they have transformed 80 million hectares of desert land into forests. For the perspective, 80 million hectares is almost 4 times bigger than the UK and much bigger than the whole state of Texas and the twice the size of California. So how did the Chinese achieve this success? Well, for example, if you go to China to see their forests and want to watch YouTube in China, you need a VPN. So wherever you go, privacy on the internet is important, and today's sponsor is Atlas VPN, and it provides the best VPN deal in the market. Right now, Atlas VPN is having a huge discount, and you can enjoy the most affordable online production for just $1.39 per month, following the link in the description. One thing I love about Atlas VPN that it's very affordable and has a data breach monitor feature. It scans all the leaked databases and informs you of any past or recent breaches where your, your personal information like your address, names, credit card information was exposed. I personally use it for streaming movies on Netflix and Call of Duty Warzone because it provides a seamless gaming experience with less ping and to get into lobbies where there's no cheaters. So go to the link in the description and grab the discount. Although China has a surface area that is almost as big as the United States of America, only 12% of the territory is arable. However, China has the world's amplest agriculture production. That means every arable land is used intensively and the government has recently invested a lot to enhance crop growth but preserving the territory. As a result of the land degradation and desertification, China is losing precious fertile land every year, swallowing vast tracts of fertile land in the process. Today, land degradation threatens more than 28% of China's territory, directly affecting nearly 40 million people in 11 provinces. So you could see how desertification is an existential threat to China. But they are fighting back aggressively. Well, the expansion of the Gobi Desert in China is attributed to mostly human activities, locally driven by deforestation, overgrazing and depletion of water resources, as well as climate change. And this expansion eats away a space that was once fit for agriculture and creates unbridled sandstorms that batter cities near the edge of the desert. A couple of years ago, one desert storm covered 1 million square miles of northern China in the dust. Combining with Beijing's industrial pollution, the city's air quality index shot to a peak of 621, a rating classified as beyond the index. For the context, levels above 200 are ranked by the US Embassy as very unhealthy, while readings between 300 to 500 are labeled hazardous. Dust storms have increased in frequency in the past 20 years, causing further damage to China's agriculture economy. Most alarmingly, the encroaching desert shows little sign of slowing so reforestation is one of the only options to combat desertification. 
Desert reforestation has been carried out by African countries, Arab countries, Pakistan and others, but China is much different. Reforestation is carried out on a giant, massive and comprehensive scale to turn desert into agricultural land. Since 1978, the Chinese government has initiated a project called Three North Shelter Forest Program, better known as the Great Green Wall which aims to halt the creeping Gobi by constructing 2,800 mile wall of trees to block its path. Additionally, in 1995, China enacted strong environmental laws which prohibit cutting trees, free roaming of stock animals on the steppes, farming on slopes were banned as well. Instead, farmers were encouraged and incentivized to plant trees on top of the hills and they were compensated to build little dams to trap water in the lowest plateau so water feeds the trees and won't escape to the Yellow River. Once the soil came back to life, farmers continued their agriculture on a new land and the government bought agricultural goods from those same farmers, encouraging them to plant more trees on desert areas and turning them into forests. We all know the lives of people on the planet depend on air and water, but not everyone is aware that forests play an essential role. Forests are home to 80% of the world's terrestrial biodiversity, consisting mainly of trees. It can absorb and store carbon, conserve soil and water, and provide oxygen and resources. A desert doesn't sound like the most promising place to plant a tree. Yet since 1978, China has planted at least 66 billion of them across its arid northern territories, hoping to transform its sandy steppes and yellow dunes into Great Green Wall. The Chinese process of planting is very interesting and it's mostly by making boxes on the desert. Each box is prepared for one tree. If the trees have started to get tall, the vegetation environment gradually changed, animals and birds began to arrive, various types of companion plants began to grow, and finally, the climate in the area Area changed to be cooler and more comfortable. To this day, China has succeeded in reforesting three deserts, first in Saihanba National Park. Saihanba is located in Hebei province, and since 1962, when workers started planting trees, Saihanba National Park has seen the forest coverage in the area soar from 12% to 80%. Saihanba is the largest man-made forest in the world and it forms a natural barrier against sandstorms and partially protects public health of millions of people living in the capital and neighboring regions. And it could have been far worse in Beijing if Saihanba National Park didn't exist. The transformation of Saihanba is the result of more than 55 years of hard work by several generations of experts. And the second is Mawusu Desert. It was one of the four major deserts in the country until it vanished from the map. 60 years ago, it was a complete desert, but now 93% of the land has turned green. In the 1950s, the area was entirely barren, made up of nothing more than sand and stones which ended up being a problem for nearby communities. The city of Yulin, for example, was forced to move further away from the desert three times after experiencing relentless sandstorms. After the success was Mawusu, China is reforesting the Kubuki Desert in Inner Mongolia. This desert is part of the Gobi and is wider than Mawusu. The Kubuki project is world famous because this time, China cooperated with the United Nations Environmental Protection. To date, the Kubuki reforestation project project has not been fully completed, but only about 60% have been reforested and it's on the process. But generally, of the three deserts that have been and are being reforested, China has obtained an area of about the size of Sri Lanka for forestry and agriculture, and the reforestation and greening projects will continue until 2050. And I made a video about how China feeds its 1.5 billion people, please check that video out because it's incredible that such a crowded country with vanishing agriculture could be self-sufficient in terms of food supply. But the coin has two sides. The main criticism of Chinese afforestation is the choice of using the practice of monoculture. In most cases, only one species of plant per planet, and this makes the forests vulnerable to epidemics. It has already happened that plant diseases have destroyed lots of trees. Other issues related to monoculture are soil consumption and the difficulty for animals to establish themselves in such a place. 
For example, in 2008, 20% of the trees have died during winter and storms destroyed 10% of the work of that year. So Chinese have to be careful with monoculture. Well, another thing, you might be asking, most places are desert because of lack of water. So how did Chinese kept trees alive? One of the explanations is, once a substantial forest canopy has been grown, the trees can actively radiate heat away from the forest. This radiative cooling drops the local temperature by a few degrees in that forest area and around its outskirts. Then warm humid air blows in and if it has relatively enough humidity, as soon as it cools, it starts dropping precipitation. So forests kind of actively farm for their own rainwater. This is how Indiana manages its farming, is that a very large portion of the state is in the south is forested, and the farmland is generally interspersed with forest throughout the state. It requires less irrigation than other farming states like North Dakota, which have to irrigate more heavily due to lack of trees. The same way the Amazon is not a huge desert, but if people keep cutting those trees, we might see what can happen. Well, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please smash the like button and subscribe. If you are interested in greening and combat certification, these are the videos I made about the Great Green Wall of Africa and Saudi Arabian agriculture in the middle of the desert. Please check them out. And please go to the description and grab the limited discount for Atlas VPN. It's incredibly affordable and the service is great. And whenever you go, the VPN is always needed and necessary.